Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to show you all how I made my scrap can. So this is the first scrap can that I've ever made, and if you don't know what a scrap can is, it's just using basically all your scrap yarn, yarn you have in your stash or in storage, um, to make a blanket out of. You can make it any size you want, any colors you want, based on what you have. Many different techniques on how to do this. You really could do it with any stitch. It is such a versatile project, um, but I'm going to show you the way that I decided to do mine, or my first one anyway. Um, I'm actually working on another one now that I'm doing a little bit differently, but that's the beauty of something like this. There really are no rules and no patterns, so you really just roll with it and choose what you want to do, and it's completely custom and so fun. And if you love colors, um, if you're a colorful person like I am, then this is especially a great project for you because it's so fun to watch all the colors work up and there's so many different combinations, endless color combinations um, that could appear. So anyway, let's get started. So for my blanket, I wrote down some info on it. So this blanket, it ended up being 122 rows, uh, 71 inches tall, or, and uh, 56 inches wide. Um, so a huge blanket. I have a queen size bed and it pretty much fits the entire top of my bed. So it, there is no hangover. Um, I used an eight millimeter or um, an L hook and tons and tons of scrap yarn. So um, the way that I chose to do this is I wanted it to have sort of like a marble effect. So I watched a few videos on people who have made scrap gans, and the biggest inspiration that I drew from was Yarn Geek. I think her first video that she ever put out was about her scrap gans, and then also Katie Ree on YouTube. I think that's how you say it. It's like K-A-T-I-E-R-E-E, -E, I think. Um, she's the one that I got the idea to use just the, the white running through it. <clears throat> so, drew some inspiration from them, and then added, of course, my own little uh, touch to it. So I wasn't sure how I wanted to go about it at first. If I wanted to just do one row, sorry for the sound of the truck. Um, I'm filming in front of uh, my bedroom window because it's the only place in this house that I get natural light, but the sound quality isn't always great. So sorry about that. Anyway, um, I, I thought maybe I would do like one row of each color, but I decided to do alternating one row and then two. One, two, one, two, if that makes sense. So like I did one row of the yellow and then I did two rows of this like multicolor uh, white with like the turquoise in it. And then one row of the brown, two rows of the green, one row of red, two rows of gray. So one, two repeating throughout. Um, and so the way that I joined this together, that is another like amazing thing about this blanket, is there are only two tails to weave in. Um, well, technically four because you hold two strands together. And so of course at the beginning of your project and at the end, you will have two tails on each side. So, but still, I mean, a colorful blanket like this and you only have to weave in four tails. Like, that's amazing. <laughs> so the join method that I used is the magic knot, which I will show you all how to do that today in this video. Um, and at first I was nervous, like how would it hold up and everything, especially because, because, because this blanket is so large, it's heavy. Um, and so I didn't know like how well the magic knot would hold. And this is my first time ever using it. So but I can tell you, it's amazing. And I've already washed and dried this blanket because I used um, all acrylic yarn and none of the knots came out. It's perfect. So, um, and I did want to mention, I chose to hold two strands together. You don't have to do that. You can do one strand. I've seen some people hold three, even four strands together. You could also use bulky yarn. 
Um, you could use anything you, you have. If you have some like really lightweight yarn, like a size one or two, and you want to use that, you can hold two strands of that together or even hold um, like a chunky yarn with a fingering weight yarn or a, or a sport weight yarn or a worsted weight yarn with a sport weight yarn. So I mean, really the combinations are endless. This is truly a project that you can unleash your creativity. Um, and I think that's what has made it so fun for me. But um, so when I first went to make this, I initially wanted it to be like a um, throw sauce. And obviously it ended up way bigger than that. I think originally I chained 48 inches, but as I worked the stitches, it ended up being more like 56 inches. So be mindful of that. Um, if you want it to be a specific size, chain a little bit less. Um, and then, but you can make it any size you want to. Baby blanket size, king size bed size, whatever size you want to. So you just start with as many chains as you want to. And then you just keep going until you're satisfied with it. So very, very easy. Um, let's see, what else did I want to go over before I switch to overhead view and show you all how I do this? Um, I think that's it. Um, this has been like a super fun project. Like I said, it's been so mindless, something I can do at night where I don't have to think about it very much and I can just whip right along with it. And I was working on other projects while I was working on this blanket, but um, if I would have been working on it only this alone, I think I could have got it done like really, really quickly. It took me a couple months since I was working on other things, but still a very quick project for how huge this blanket is. Um, and so at the end of this video, I will insert a little slideshow of some pictures that one of my really good friends took of the blanket. There are so many um, cute pictures that she took, so I don't really have a good way to show you the full blanket um, in, you know, here in this space that I have to film, but those pictures will definitely give you every angle of this blanket that you could want so you can see all the beautiful colors and exactly what it looks like. So anyway, I have rambled enough, but I just, um, I can't stop gushing about this blanket. It's awesome. I think you should make it. Uh, so anyway, let's get started into the actual tutorial. I'm just going to show you how I, um, changed, uh, did the magic knot and how to, you know, to join, to join the new colors and it's super easy. So let's get started. Okay, so as I said in the first clip, you can really use any stitch you want to, any yarn. Um, it's really, really versatile, but today I'm just going to show you how I did mine. So I held two strands together, one colored strand and one white strand, and I used a size 8 millimeter hook, and I used the half double crochet stitch. I find that the half double crochet stitch is um, really quick to work. And really, I think it's my favorite stitch. So, um, anyway, ignore some of the dust that's going to be in this yarn. As I said, this is my scrap yarn. So, it's been in storage. <laughs> okay. So, you're going to start out by making a slip knot. And then you're just going to chain however many chains you want to. As I said, I originally chained 48 inches. And, um, but my blanket ended up being 57 inches wide, but for the purposes of this video and it not taking months to make, I am just going to chain 15. And if you've never worked with two strands of yarn before, it's actually very simple. Um, and by the way, the yarn that I'm using is all worsted weight and all acrylic. I wanted it to be, that's what I have, um, the most of in my storage, but also I wanted it to be washable and dryable. Okay, so let me count my stitches here, my chains. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Hold on, <laughs> I already lost count. Okay, let me count my chains. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. So one more. Okay, and um, in my blanket, I did one row, um, as I said in the previous clip, one row of one color, and then two, one, two, but you could do whatever you wanted to do, whatever you like. So, 
To begin, you're just going to work in the second chain from the hook. We're going to do all half double crochets right across. So this purple will be only one row. And if you don't know how to do half double crochets or how to make a chain, then um, I do have a video on how to make a chain and I am going to be putting one out on how to do the half double crochet stitch but there are many many videos online on how to do those so um, my purposes of this video wasn't to teach you how to crochet but just to teach you how to make this blanket so um, but I do definitely think this is a beginner pattern um, I think anybody could do this and um, it works up fairly quickly so I think any skill level would enjoy this. And I'm going a little bit slower so y'all can see a little better what I'm doing. Whenever I'm, um, you know, at night in bed watching TV and working on this, I can um, whip right along it, pr whip right along pretty quickly. But, um, okay, so we are almost to the end of the row. And you can see just like this really pretty marbled effect that... Um, it gives using the strand of white. I also want to make one where I use a strand of black or a strand of dark gray. I have seen where um, where um, Yarn Geek, she did one with black and it was awesome. It looked way better than you would ever think um, a blanket made with black yarn and all kinds of colors would look. But so that's definitely um, next up on my list is to make one with black or gray running through it, but you could use any color you want. Um, the one I'm making right now, I'm not holding a, um, one certain color through the whole thing. I'm actually just using two strands of two different colors um, all throughout the blanket. So like I said, so many possibilities. Okay, so to do the magic knot, since we're gonna be using the white through the whole blanket, you're gonna leave that attached. You're gonna cut your purple yarn or whatever color yarn you have, um, you want to leave about five inches and then you want to just grab your next color. Okay, so to do the magic knot, you are just going to have your strand that's attached to your project. You're going to take your new color, you're going to lay it on top this way, and then you are going to tie this strand around the blue and the blue around the purple or whatever color you have. So you're just gonna create a knot. So I'm, I always start with this side for some reason. It really doesn't matter. I just find that it works better for me. So you literally are just going to tie a knot around that blue strand. And then you take both strands here of the purple and just pull them pretty tight. You don't wanna break the yarn, so be careful with that, but you do want it to be tight. And then you're going to take your blue and tie it around the purple. So just a basic knot. Just loop that around there and stick it through. And then pull tight on that. And then what you're going to do, so you have it like this, you're going to take the, the blue yarn and the purple yarn and pull them. And that's why it's magic. <laughs> it's so fun. Like I've done this a hundred times now and I still enjoy doing it. So and then you just want to pull pretty tight, not so tight that you break the yarn. And then you can just cut off these little tails and you can cut them pretty short. I do leave a little bit of length on mine just to be safe and you can't see it in the blanket. Um, it really is hidden quite nicely. So there's your magic knot. And I promise you as it's so far it has held amazingly. This is, um, and for me, a lot easier and a lot um I enjoy it a lot more, this join method, than um, other join methods I've used. I think um, it's just quick and easy. Okay, so now that you have your new color connected, you are just going to chain one and turn your work. And then we're just going to do two rows of this new color. And usually there's one stitch I have found that's of the old color when you do it this with this method, but you really can't tell that whenever you're looking at the whole blanket. It just looks um, like each row is, you know, a different color. You can't really see that transition very much. So you're going to do now two rows of your next color. All right, I'm going to finish up my two rows and I will meet you back here in just a second. Okay, so.
so um, as you can see we have the one row of the purple two rows of the blue and then I'm gonna grab another color and do one more row with you all okay so again with that magic knot you're just gonna leave the white yarn attached leave about a five inch tail on the colored yarn then you're gonna bring your new yarn up and lay it above the, sh the, the current strand you're working with and then just tie that one that you were using around the new strand and pull tight and then tie the new strand around the one you were working with and pull that tight and then pull both sides to bring the knots together pull tight and then just cut those tails okay so chain one turn and then half double crochet all along the row and with this one since the we did the the first row was one then we did two rows of the blue now we're going to do one row of the green so i will meet you at the end Okay, so there's our little scrap gan swatch. And as you can see, having the white held throughout the whole thing, I think just really gives it a cool effect of like a marbled look and it really ties in all the colors. And um, you can see that, you know, I would never really think to put like a green like this with that purple, but all together, especially with that white strand, it really looks good. And it's so fun just to see what the colors are going to look like and then just grab um, a new color as you go and just, um, it's so fun to see how it works up. So next I'm going to insert that little slideshow of all the pictures that my friend took for me of the blanket so you can get a really up close look of it. And then um, I'll meet you back here at the end. So I really hope you all love my blanket as much as I do, and I really hope that you all will consider making your own scrap in. It has been such an awesome scrap busting project for me um, and has become one of my favorite projects of all time, and I can't wait to make more of them in the future. So if you make your own scrap gan, I would love to know. And I hope you all enjoyed those pictures that I included. Um, aren't those baby chickens so cute? <laughs> they um, incubated their own eggs and hatched like, I think like 13 or 14 baby chicks. So it was so cool. I got to see some of them hatch, which was absolutely amazing. And so cool how God designed animals and um, the instincts that they have. You could see like the other little chickens when, when they would hatch, they would try to help the other ones get out of their shell and then once they were out of their shell it takes them a little bit to get to where they can walk and stuff they're really tired and so the ones that had been hatched a little longer would go over and kind of peck at them to get them you know moving so so super cool but I appreciate her so much taking those pictures for me and I hope you enjoy them as much as I do and I hope you guys have a great weekend um it is thursday today when i'm filming this and we have some beautiful weather here where i live so i hope you guys are too and if you have any questions at all please leave them down below and i will answer them for you and i really hope that you will consider subscribing and um if you like this video please like this video it helps me out so much so anyways i will see you guys in the next one may god bless you bye